And we ask you to commend our steps. That Lord, it may be your will and not our will. That be done here. You have been a very good God to us. You made our cripples get up and walk from the ground. Viwete wote wakasimama na wakatembea kutoka kwa ardhi. Viwete wetu wakasimama kutoka kwenye udongo. Vi... Lord you helped our cripples you raised them from the dust. Bwana ulisaidia viwete wetu ukawainua kutoka kwa udongo. And the blind na vipofu that had given up hope of ever seeing light. Ambao walikuwa wamekata tamaa ya kuwahi kuona nuru. Lord you overruled the human situation. Bwana ulitawala juu ya kila hali za kibinadamu. And now they can see. Na sasa wanaweza kuona. And you are continuing to touch the hearts of men. Na unaendelea kuiguza mioyo ya watu. Across the entire earth. Kote kote katika dunia. From this land. Kutoka katika nchi hii. May you bless this land. Hebu ukabariki nchi hii. That she may continue to be the classroom. Ya kwamba likaendelea kuwa darasa. For all the other nations to learn from kwa mataifa mengine yote yakajifunze kutoka kwao katika njia za Mungu katika siku hizi za mwisho katika jina kula Yesu amen amina haleluya haleluya thank you so much asante sana you can be seated in the mighty presence of the lord mwaweza kuketi katika uwepo mkuu wa bwana haleluya haleluya What a blessed day we are having here today. Ni siku iliyobarikiwa kiasi gani tulionayo hapa hivi leo. That uh, we can put time aside and meet. Ya kwamba tunaweza weka masaa kando na tukutane. To hear from the Lord. Kusikia kutoka kwa Bwana. To seek his counsel. Kutafuta ushauri wake. And his leadership at this na, hour. Na uongozi wake katika risaa hili. Now in the first session. Sasa katika hawamu ile ya kwanza we saw very clearly tuliona waziwazi mno what the lord is saying to the church kile ambacho bwana anasema kwa kanisa at this critical hour katika saa hii nyeti mno in the history of the church katika historia ya kanisa and in that conversation na katika hayo majadiliano i shared on the mighty vision of the coming of the messiah nilishiriki kuhusu maono makuu kuhusiana kukuja kwa masihi and then we read from daniel chapter 12 alafu tukasoma kutoka kitabu cha danieli 12 and some very important issues came up na maswala nyeti mno yakaibuka which the lord is actually driving into the heart of the church ambayo bwana anayaleta katika mioyo ya kanisa key among them miongoni mwao iliyokuwa nyeti became the fact ikakuja kwamba swala that the lord is exhorting the church exhorting encouraging the church kwamba bwana anahimiza kanisa the lord is pulling the church bwana anavuta kanisa towards himself kuelekea yeye binafsi and asking the church na kuliuliza kanisa to establish certain key fundamentals likaimarishe baadhi ya mambo muhimu in her salvation katika wakovu wake and we saw very clearly na tuliona waziwazi mno that he talks about the divine registry of god kwamba anazungumzia kuhusu register ya kiungu ya mungu that in that registry ya kwamba katika hiyo register the lord is keeping a record bwana anahifadhi rekodi a record of the names of the righteous people rekodi ya wa, majina ya watu wenye haki people that walk in the fear of god watu watembeao katika hofu ya bwana and that this record is not a, a, a fairy tale it's not a story book ya na kwamba hii rekodi sio tu hadithi 
It's a real record in the kingdom of God. Ni rekodi ya halisia katika ufalme wa Mungu. And then alafu the day is coming. Siku inakuja when it will really matter. Ambapo kwa kweli itajalisha. If your name kama jina lako is found in that book. Limepatikana katika hicho kitabu. And the title of our conversation today. Na kichwa cha mjadala wetu leo hii is defining the bride of Christ. Ni maelezo ya bi harusi wa Kristo. Kutambua defining identifying the bride of Christ. Kutambua bi harusi wa Kristo. And I said that in the conversation the Lord is having with me. Na nikasema kwamba katika majadiliano ambayo Bwana ako pamoja nami. What is most important? Kile ambacho ni cha unyeti zaidi. Is that the Lord is raising forth the features. Ni kwamba Bwana anainua tabia. The features that the church ought to possess in order to be in right standing with the Lord. Tabia ambazo kanisa lapaswa kuwa nazo ili liwe na msimamo sawia na Bwana. And among them we have seen now. Na miongoni mwao tumeona sasa. He saying anasema that a day comes ya kwamba siku inakuja when it will be key wakati ambapo itakuwa nyeti that your name must be found. Kwamba jina lako lazima lipatikane. Written limeandikwa in that book of life katika hicho kitabu cha uzima and we've gone further also na tumeenda mbali pia to say that that church he celebrates kusema kwamba ilo kanisa ambalo ana alisherehekea the my people church those are my people kanisa la watu wangu sli with them kwa hivyo anajitambulisha kwa karibu na wao and i wanted to raise up some of those features that you may ask yourself some serious questions na nilitaka kuibua baada ya hizo tabia ili kwamba ukajiulize baada ya maswali ya kumaanisha because i said kwa sababu nalisema there are several scriptures in the bible that actually define the my people church maandiko kadhaa katika biblia ambayo yanaelezea kanisa la watu wangu and i i mentioned one of them in passing the book of second corinthians chapter 6 verses 14 to 18 na nikataja baadhi yake katika kupitia wa korinto wa pili mlango wa 6 mstari wa 14 kuendelea and key among the things raised there the features raised there na ile kuu miongoni mwa maswala yaliyoibuliwa pale he says anasema that elect that group of people hicho kikundi cha watu wateule they are a church that is separated wao ni kanisa ambalo limetengwa separated from the moral decay of this world limetengwa kutokana na muozo wa hulka ama tabia ya ulimwengu huu and he says naye anasema if you go to a feast ikiwa utakwenda kwenye sherehe and you take some barbecue beef na uchukue nyama ya barbecue ambayo imechomwa ambayo imechomwa and eat that beef na ukakule hiyo nyama and then you say ah i have some extra left alafu useme ah niko na ya ziada ambayo imebaki then you say let me take this consecrated beef alafu aseme wacha nichukue nyama iliyowekwa wakfu and fold it in my garment na nikaikunja nikaiweke katika bazi langu and take it home na nikaichukue nyumbani is it still consecrated je bado ingali imewekwa wakfu thank you i see a lot of people shaking their heads that no it cannot asante naona baadhi ya watu wakitingiza ficho wakisema haiwezi in other words kwa maneno mengine that you cannot mix light with darkness kwamba uwezi ukachanganya nuru na giza in other words kwa maneno mengine he is saying anasema that every time you add darkness to the light you have received kwamba kila wakati unapoongeza giza kwa ile nuru ambayo umeipokea it is always equal to darkness kila mara inatoshana tu na giza even the salvation we receive from jesus is a separated salvation hata wokovu tuliopokea kutoka kwa yesu ni wokovu ambao umetengwa and i want to move on step by step na ningependa kusonga mbele hatua kwa hatua to elucidate to open up this tremendous vision that the lord is using to speak to the church nikaweze kufunua maono haya ya ajabu ambayo bwana anaitumia kuzungumza na kanisa and the important questions came up na swali nyeti likaibuka the question then became swali basi likawa because he said kwa sababu alisema that 
the multitude that were asleep in the dust of the earth kwamba wengi wa umati waliokuwa melala katika mavumbi ya dunia they awoke they were waken up waliamshwa and he says naye akasema after that resurrection baada ya kufufuliwa huko one group was taken up into the eternal kingdom of jehovah kikundi kimoja kikachukuliwa katika ufalme wa jehova wa milele and he said the other group went to hell na akasema kikundi hicho kingine kikaenda jehanamu and then he said alafu anasema among those that were resurrected for the kingdom of jehova our god miongoni mwa wale waliofufuliwa kuingia katika ufalme wa jehova mungu wetu he says anasema there were two subgroups kulikuwa na vikundi viwili vidogo and he said na anasema that one subgroup constituted those he defines as who were wise wise people kikundi kimoja kiliashiria wale watu waliokuwa wenye hekima and the other subgroup he said were those who led in fact you can say the teachers of righteousness those who led people to the righteousness of the lord na kile kikundi kingine haswa unaweza kuwaita walimu wa uhaki wale walioongoza wengi kutenda uhaki and then the question became basi swali likafanyika Church of Christ. Kanisa la Kristo. Ever since you became born again. Tangia ulipookoka. Have you really led people to the righteousness of the Lord? Je, umewaongoza watu katika uhaki wa Bwana? Also, pia, ever since you became born again. Tangia ulipookoka. Have you really led people to the wisdom of God? Je, kwa kweli umewaongoza watu katika hekima ya Mungu saying akisema that when we practice salvation ya kwamba tunapotekeleza wokovu that at the center of christian worship ya kwamba iliyo ya kati katika ile ibada ya mkristo is the evangelism we do ni uinjilisti ambao tunautenda meaning kumaanisha what we do becomes evangelism kile tunachotenda inafanyika uinjilisti the world can see ulimwengu unaweza ukaona and i said nami nikasema the serious questions have arisen in the conduct of the present church maswali yameibuka maswali nyeti kwa uhusiana na tabia ya, ya kanisa la sasa and i said nami nikasema and today i'm going to share very deep here na leo naenda kushiriki kwa bilindi mno hapa because down the line i'm going to share a certain vision at the throne of god kwa sababu hatimaye naenda kuzungumzia kuhusu maono ya bwana katika enzi ya mungu but i said lakini nalisema that sometimes when you look at the practice of the present day believer ya kwamba wakati mwingine ukiangalia tabia za mkristo muumini wa sasa they turn people away from the righteousness of the lord wana wageuza watu mbali kutoka kwa uhaki wa bwana and i said that becomes the point of the need for reformation in the church na nikasema basi hapo pakawa ndipo pahali panapohitajika mabadiliko katika nyumba ya mungu restoration urejesho revival uvuvio and repentance na toba hallelujah hallelujah i want to move a little further now nataka nisonge mbali kidogo sasa Why does he talk about those who are sleeping in the dust of the earth? Ni kwa nini anazungumzia wale ambao wamelala katika mavumbi ya dunia? I'm going to walk with you step by step so we may read about the coming of the Messiah first. Ninaenda kuwapeleka hatua kwa hatua ili kwamba tukasome kuhusiana na kuskuja kwa masihi kwanza. Then I'll be able now to navigate you to a place where he uses the lustres, the glory of light to define that church. Alafu nitawapeleka mahali ambapo anatumia utukufu utukufu wa Mungu kulielezea hilo kanisa The book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 precious people Kitabu cha Wathesalonike wa kwanza mlango wa 4 watu wa thamani verses 16 and 17 Mustari wa 16 na 17 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 Wathesalonike wa kwanza sura yake ya 4 Again he says Tena anasema verses 16 1 Thessalonians 4:16-17 Wa Thessalonike wa kwanza sura ya 4 mstari wa 16 na 17 Once you are there you can shout amen to me Ukishafika pale sema amina kwangu Thank you Asante He says Can I read now Thank you He says For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command with the voice of the archangel 
and the trumpet call of God and the dead in Christ will rise first kwa maana bana mwenyewe atashuka toka mbinguni akitoa amri kwa sauti kuu pamoja na sauti ya malaika mkuu na sauti ya tarumbeta ya Mungu na wale waliolala mauti wakiwa wanamwamini wana Kristo watakufuka kwanza so you see that the lord is giving the chronology of the events of that day right Waipo, unaona kwamba bwana anapeana mfululizo wa matukio katika hiyo siku and it's important to understand na ni muhimu kuelewa that as he was talking about the rapture of the dead they are sleeping the dust of the earth ya kwamba alipokuwa akizungumzia kuhusu unyakuzi wa wafu waliokuwa wamelala katika mavumbi ya dunia that is just a section of the events of the day hiyo tu ni sehemu tu ya matukio ya siku because actually the bible says that those who are asleep in the dust will be the first to get up be resurrected be glorified and then rise to him kwa sababu biblia inasema kwamba wale waliolala katika mavumbi ya dunia ndio watakuwa wa kwanza kufufuliwa kubadilishwa na kuinuka na kwenda kuwa pamoja naye and th- that is now the resurrection sasa huko ndiko kufufuliwa and then alafu he now says when we read father those who are still alive at that time and christian sasa anasema atakaposoma zaidi kwamba wale watakuwa wako hai na wa Kristo. He said those will be translated. Anasema hao watabadilishwa. So you see the others are being transformed but now the, those who are alive at that point will be translated and they too will catch up with the others there. Unaona kwamba kuna kubadilishwa wale ambao watakuwa hai watabadilishwa na kukutana pamoja naye angani. Verse 17. Mstari wa 17. He says after that we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the lord in the air baada ya hilo sisi tulio hai bado tulio salia tutanyakuliwa pamoja nao katika mawingu ili kumlaki bwana hewani and so we will be with the lord forever hivyo tutakuwa pamoja na bwana milele and so that is very powerful na hivyo basi hiyo ni nguvu sana because he's saying that those who are sleep in the dust will they will resurrect first be transformed to glorious bodies and garments which i'm going to share very shortly on and then meet the lord in the sky after that we who are still alive translated to catch up with them there kwa kwanza kabisa anasema kwamba wale waliolala katika mavumbi watabadilishwa na mavazi nitazungumzia hiyo kisha watapaa juu alafu sisi ambao tuko hai tutabadilishwa alafu tutakutana naye angani for the lord himself kwa kuwa bwana mwenyewe on that day will come down katika hiyo siku atashuka chini and yet we know very well na ile hali tujua vyema kabisa that in the book of acts chapter 1 verse 11 ya kwamba katika kitabu cha matendo ya mitume mlango wa kwanza mstari wa 11 when he was taken up wakati alipochukuliwa juu acts chapter 1 verse um, verse 11 matendo ya mitume sura yake ya kwanza mstari wa 11 this is what he says here hivi ndivyo asemavyo hapa he says anasema men of galilee they said why do you stand here looking into the sky this same jesus who has been taken away from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven wakasema enyi watu wa Galilaya mbona mnasimama mkitazama juu angani huyu Yesu aliyechukuliwa kutoka kwenu kwenda mbinguni atarudi tena jinsi hiyo hiyo mlivyomwona akienda zake mbinguni he says anasema and the lord himself will come down naye bwana mwenyewe atashuka chini but now we are being told here how he will come down La, lakini sasa tunaambiwa hapa jinsi ambavyo atashuka chini and you see na unaona that essentially is saying that he will come back again ya kwamba, in that glorious body he will come back again with the cloud ya kwamba atakuja tena na huo mwili wa utukufu na huo mwili wa utukufu atarudi tena katika wingu haleluya haleluya and then alafu if you read the book of john chapter 11 verse 11 ukisoma kitabu cha yohana sura ya 11 mstari wa 11 he 
spoke to the disciples. He said, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep. Let me go there and wake him up. And that's why he now shows me they are asleep in the dust of the earth. He shows them to me now awakening. You see that now. But who are these? That is now the serious question. Because he said in this conversation with me. And the majority of them have remained in the dust of the earth. By the way, I know so much detail that I have not shared. Some of which I have not shared. Some of which I don't share because of time also. So much. For example, I also know when all of them have seen the day, so it will take place. The same way I prophesied the earthquake coming to Mount Everest. Vile vile nilivyotoa unabii kuhusu mtetemeko wa ardhi ambao ulikuwa unakuja mlima Everest to shake the biggest heaviest mountain on the earth the heaviest kutingiza mlima mzito mzito zaidi katika dunia that people used to go there to just sit on the slopes and gaze at the sun and meditate and worship you see so if he's, i speak that i say he's coming to shake that mountain ya kwamba watu walikuwa wanakwenda pale kileleni na kujifurahisha na kuabudu na kuketi pale na kuabudu jua na mambo mengi pale na kuketi pale na kuabudu jua na mambo mengi pale and so na hivyo and then it comes to pass alafu inakuja kutimia you see that down the same way I talk about Katrina New Orleans my son where are you vile vile nilivonena kuhusu Katrina New Orleans and then it comes to pass alafu ikakuja kutimia is the same way ni jinsi ile ile what i'm discussing today regarding the day i have seen kuhusiana na kile ambacho nazungumza leo hii kuhusiana na ile siku ambayo nimeiona is the same way it will be fulfilled hivyo hivyo ndivyo itakavyotimilizwa that's what the lord is saying hivyo ndivyo bwana anavyosema he's saying just as he says anasema kama vile tu alivyosema that when i come to kisumu kwamba nitakapokuja kisumu the glory of mzee the glory of mzee utukufu wa mzee utukufu wa mzee and it was someone from from maryland called pastor lupo who is sitting here we are honored Pastor Lupo with his wife. Mchungaji Lupo na mke wake. They are the ones who asked that prophecy we've had it. What's the meaning of the word mzee? Wakasema huwa unabii tumeusikia. Basi maana ya mzee ni nini? And then a big discussion began in the web. Alafu mjadala mkubwa ukaanza kwenye mtandao. Until the people from our radio station said no, it means the ancient of days. Alafu hadi watu kutoka radio wakasema ah yamaanisha ule mzee wa kale. So when I was giving the prophecy about this meeting ba, in Kisumu. Ndipo basi nilipokuwa nikitoa unabii kuhusiana mkutano huu wa Kisumu. I said the glory of mzee will come down. Nikasema utukufu wa mzee utashuka chini. Now look is right there. Sasa tazama ipale pale. And so the Lord is speaking very profound to the church in that way. He's saying anasema that look kwamba tazama the same way he's saying these things that they are coming to pass. Jinsi ile ile anaposema mambo haya yatakuja kutimia is the same way the day he is announcing will come to pass. Ni vile vile ile siku ambayo anaitangaza itakuja kutimia. But let me move on on this. Lakini hebu nikasonge katika haya. So you see na hivyo basi unaona that the Lord is speaking to the current church. Kwamba Bwana analinenea kanisa la sasa. And he's telling them through this vision here. Na anawaambia kupitia haya maono hapa that look kwamba tazama this is the hour of wisdom in the church hili ndilo sala hekima katika kanisa can i repeat this je naweza nikarudia haya that if you have been waiting for an hour kwamba ikiwa umekuwa ukingojea saa 
where wisdom will really count in the church. Ambapo kwa kweli hekima itahesabika itahitajika katika kanisa. He says don't wait anymore. Anasema usingojee tena sasa. Because that hour has arrived. Kwa sababu rusaa hilo limekwisha wasini. Yeah because the, the, the Lord will come for the church. Kwa sababu Bwana atalijia kanisa. And that wisdom will now matter. Na hiyo hekima sasa itajalisha. And then is using that to say another thing again. Anatumia hiyo kusema jambo lingine tena. He say anasema that you are the generation of wisdom in the church. Kwamba ninyi ndio kizazi cha hekima katika kanisa. In other words you are the church. Kwa maneno mengine nyie ndio kanisa. You are the church that will walk in that wisdom, the coveted church, coveted church. Ninyi ndiye kanisa ambalo mtatembea katika hiyo hekima kanisa ambalo linatamaniwa but have you embraced that that's Laki, the question have you embraced it lakini je swali ni umeikumbatia hiyo in other words you are the generation of wisdom in kwa, the church kwa maneno mengine nyie ndiye kizazi cha hekima katika kanisa where wisdom is the fear of god ambapo hekima ni kumcha bwana and i said there are certain things when you look at the present day church that you people preside over na nikasema kuna baadhi ya mambo ukiangalia katika kanisa la sasa ambao nyie watu mnasimamia there are certain things you just look and you say that surely this does not reflect the fear of god kuna baadhi ya mambo ambayo unaweza ukayaona na useme kwa hakika hii haiashiri hofu ya Mungu for example the abortions in the church kwa mfano kuavya mimba katika kanisa the, the nudity of women in the church tight women wearing tight uh, skirts for you to see their bodies Uchi. their anatomy as they worship that is immoral you know that that is immorality. Wanawake kutembea uchi katika kanisa, wavalia longi ambazo zinawambana kwamba wewe ukaweze kutazama. Long in fact trousers or skirts that are tight for you to see their anatomy. Now that definitely is evil and sinful. Longi ama sketi ambazo zinawabana ili ukaweze kuona maumbile ya miili yao. Hiyo ni usherati katika kanisa. Then the question becomes. Basi swali linafanyika if she, if he or she whoever it is is dressing that way had the fear of god yeye awe wa kiume ama wa kike anayevalia hivyo je ako na hofu ya mungu if they had the fear of god ikiwa wangalikuwa na hofu ya mungu wouldn't they have questioned themselves je si wangejiuliza swali wenyewe because every person has capacity he has put in us capacity to detect what is evil and what is right kwa sababu kila mtu amehakikisha kwamba ameweka uweza wa kuweza kutambua yaliyo mabaya na mema and so that's why i'm saying na hiyo ndio sababu ninasema the anointing for this hour upako wa risahili is meant to reveal sin unasababishwa kufunua dhambi that then people may repent. Ya kwamba basi watu waweze kutubu. Then the next thing is this is again now the hour of righteousness. Alafu kitu kingine hili ndilo saa la uhaki. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can I now move deeper onto this now? Je, naweza songa vilindini kwa hii sasa? Let me move deeper now. Hebu nikaingie vilindini sasa. I want to focus on the wise. Ninataka kulenga wenye hekima. Before I come to the righteous. Kabla nije kwa wenye haki. Because my mission today kwa sababu huduma yangu hivi leo is to be able to identify to you the perfect bride of Christ. Ni kuweza kutambua pia harusi mkamilifu wa Kristo. Now look at this. Sasa tazama hii. Everyone focus before you write. Kila mtu mnilenge kabla muandike. If you can if you can. Ikiwa unaweza. He saying anasema in this tremendous vision katika maono haya ya ajabu he says those who are wise will shine will shine like the brightness of the heavens anasema wale wenye hekima watangaa kama mwanga wa wa wa, wa, wa mbingu and those who lead men into righteousness will shine like the stars forever and ever na wale wa waongoza wengi kutenda uhaki watangaa kama nyota milele na milele it is amazing to me ya shangaza kwangu mie that the lord is using the lustres of light ya kwamba bwana anatumia ile mianga ya miangaza mianga mianga is very powerful word the, the glow of light ile mianga ya mwangaza to be able to define the bride ili kuweza kuelezea biarusi say akisema that those who are wise kwamba wale wenye hekima they will, glitter, they will shine a light watana, like the skies kama, like the heavens kama mbingu and those who lead many to righteousness they will shine a light like the stars na wale wa waongoza wengi watangaza mwangaza kama nyota 
So therefore the Lord is saying that for you to identify who the bride of Christ is, the perfect bride, then you can use this standard of the light Basi unaweza kutumia kiwango hiki cha mwangaza kiasi gani? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Light. Mwanga. And in this vision when he showed me this. Na katika haya maono aliponionyesha haya. You could see that there was darkness. Ungeweza kuona kwamba kulikuwa na giza. And when they came out. Na walipotoka nje. That's why within the background of the darkness and the dust I could see their glorious garments. Glowing. Kati ya ule mwanga na na mavumbi ningeweza kuona ule mwanga uki ukiangaza. Ule nguo zao their glorious garments glowing in that background. That's why it's so powerful to see. In Ma fact I, we have put it on the web. We put it on the web many many years ago. But I'm saying that there was darkness and when that event takes place then now you see the glory within that background hallelujah hallelujah can we walk step by step on this okay turn with me the book of john I will explain to you how that happens to the church today. Turn with me the book of John. Chapter 8, 12. Let me go through it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then I will also come to the book. Remember, I promised to revisit the book. John. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The book of John chapter 8 verse 12. Yohana sura ya 8 mstari wa 12. Let me find it first. Hebu ni tafute kwanza. Okay, there you go. Hapo waondoka basi. John chapter 8 verse 12. Can I read it now? Yohana mlango wa 8 mstari wa 12. Je, naweza nikaisoma? He says, when Jesus spoke again Again, when Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Kisha Yesu wakasema nao tena, akawambia, mimi ni nuru ya ulimwengu, mutu ya yote, akini fuata, hata tembea gizani kamwe, bali atakuwa na nuru ya uzima. You see that now? He's setting the standards. He's saying, I am the light of this world. And whoever follows me will never walk in darkness. So he's already setting parameters for you to know. The book of John chapter 9, the next, the next scripture. Verse 5. He says, While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. So he set it out very clearly that he is about light that he is the light of this world now let us look at the church then can we go to Matthew chapter 5 and now try to see the church the bride Matthew chapter 5 precious people 14 to 16 step by step are you following me Thank you. Asante. Matthew. Matthew. Chapter 5, 14 to 16. Sura ya tano mtari wa kumina ne hadi kumina sita. What an awesome day. Ni siku ya ajabu kia sigani. What an awesome country, Kenya. Ni inchi ya ajabu kia sigani, Kenya. Where the top leadership of government can be sitting and making notes, taking the word in the broad sunny day sunny summer day Mahali ambapo viongozi wa uh, inchi. aren't you longing for that in your country only two people did long for it Ni watu wawili tu ambao anatamani hiyo. <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah learning about the perfect bride that you may be that church and enter eternity 
kujifunza kuhusu bia harusi mkamilifu kwamba mtajue hiyo na mkaingia katika umilele Matthew chapter 5 verses uh, I say 13 14 to, to, to 16 we can start 13 Matayo mlango wa 5 nilisema kuanzia mstari wa 14 hadi 16 tuweza anzia mstari wa 13 You are the salt of the earth but if the salt loses its saltiness how can it be made salty again it is no longer good for anything except to be thrown and to be trampled underfoot Ninyi ni chumvi ya ulimwengu lakini chumvi ikipoteza ladha yake yawezaje kuridhishwa ladha yake tena haifai tena kwa kitu chochote ila kutupwa nje ikakanyagwe na watu Remember he had said earlier Kumbuka alikuwa amesema mwanzoni I am the light of this world mimi ndimi nuru ya ulimwengu huu. Now he says verse 14. Sasa you are saying mstari wa 14. You are the light of the world. Ninyi ni nuru ya ulimwengu. He is using light. Anatumia nuru to define himself. Kujieleza mwenyewe. And to define the perfect bride. Na kujuelezea babi harusi mkamilifu. So there is a light. Kwa hivyo kunayo nuru. That the church ambayo kanisa is supposed to be a meeting. Inapaswa kuangaza Hey, hey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can I continue? Jenaweza kuendelea. And he says, a town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Muji uliojengwa kilimani hawezi ukafichwa. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Wala watu hawawashi tena kuifunika kwa bakuli. Instead they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. Badala yake uiweka kwenye kinara chake nayo utoa mwanga kila mtu aliyemo ndani ya ile nyumba aweze kuona. In the same way vivyo hivyo let your light shine before others nuru yenu iangaze mbele ya watu wengine before men mbele ya watu where men is equal to men and women ambapo watu inalinganishwa tu wa kike na wa kiume shine before others ukaangaze kwa wengine that they may see the good deeds ili wapate kuona matendo yenu mema and glorify your father in heaven wa mtukuze baba yenu aliye mbinguni and the only thing that is good to god is holy na kitu chochote ambacho ni kizuri kwa mungu ni takatifu so in other words he say kwa hivyo kwa maneno mengine you are saying that let your light shine to the man to the world kwamba wacha nuru yenu ikaangaze kwa ulimwengu that men may see your holy deeds kwamba wanadamu wapate kuona matendo yenu ya utakatifu and begin to glorify your father in heaven he is using light to define the perfect bride hey hey so there is a light kwa hivyo kunayo nuru that the present church the current church kwamba kanisa la sasa is supposed to be a meeting linapaswa kuangaza but if let's just stop here and think about it this way for me from this vision i could see the darkness that consumed the earth and the glory that came up by the way it is the glory that hits that hits the soil hata hivyo na ule utukufu uliokuja ni utukufu ambao uligonga dunia ndio utukufu ndio inagonga dunia utukufu ndio inagonga dunia and shakes it those were tombs that were opening it was not an earthquake na ikaitingiza hiyo yalikuwa makaburi ambayo yalikuwa yakifunguka halikuwa tetemeko la ardhi that's why i was seeing a lot of dust and particles move the surface of the earth moving It was the glory that hit the soil and the tombs were opening. If there will be graves here and some holy saints are here, it will open right here. Basi ulikuwa utukufu wa Mungu uliogonga na ni makaburi yaliyokuwa yakifunguka. Haikuwa tetemeko la ardhi. Ikiwa wa utukufu ingefanyika hapa itafunguka. Okay, thank you so much. Ingekuwa mtu aka hapo ambao ni mtakatifu alafu hiyo siku ifike utukufu itagonga hapa itatingiza ardhi itafungua kaburi atatoka it's okay i've already said it but listen to this now lakini sikiza haya sasa it's amazing to me hii ashangaza kwangu mimi that when they came out ya kwamba walipotoka nje the lord gave me further details bana alinipatia vipengee vyake zaidi he showed me alinionyesha where all of them look wakati mahali ambapo wote by the way they don't go up here hata hivyo hawakwendi hapa juu for your own information kwa kuwafahamisheni 
they don't come out and go up here. They come out together with the living saints, the holy living. And they are pulled to one corner of the earth. And I know exactly that spot. Where that portal is. You can tell because I've read a scripture. I've read Acts chapter 111. Until recently, I, I only revealed to a few bishops here, right? Where that portal will is and where they will be pulled to. Mahali but now I've said it, I've said it in the public. Mahali pale paingilio, mahali yeah. Know ye not that this same Jesus who has been taken away from you in that glorious body of his together with the cloud will come back in the same way? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you see that today the Lord is releasing some deeper secrets here. So they are all pulled to one corner. Where the portal is. And as they enter the cloud covers. But I want to mention these precious people. Just focus on me. Look at this now. In that vision there was darkness and then there were coming out. So there was the glory in the background of that darkness. In fact, if you see the image we posted on the web many, many years ago after that vision, of course, I sit with graphics designers, we try to put it on the web. If you see the image we posted on the web, you see as if the sun is coming out. So, Hivyo, just like the heavens, the sky, kama vile mbingu, anga, after the darkness of the night, wa usiku, when the sun comes out, ju, jua chomoza, and the sky now lights up, na anga sasa inanga, and begins to illuminate the dark sky, na ina, the, dark, the dark earth, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Just like after a dark night, and then the sun begins to come out, illuminating the skies by the heavens, and then the heavens now begin to change the countenance of the dark earth. So is the wise church supposed to be. Are we together now? Because even before he said you are the light of the world, he already said something there saying that you are the salt of the earth. Meaning, in defining the perfect bride of Christ, she, she must be found to have capacity to change, transform, illuminate this dark earth. I said we are going to define her. Now we are seeing the basic tenets of that church. And I, I, I don't have much time to prevail on this because I need to move to another and bring you to a vision at the throne that also helps define that church. I need to move there. Yeah. 
And, I, and that's why when you come from all your countries, wherever you come from, very far away, it's important that I give you this deep, this message. To take you to the throne of God and give you the vision from the throne. He saying that every time you look at the sky at sunrise, it gives hope to a previously dark world <laughs> the wise church the hope she is the hope of this dark world do you see that in you Je, waona hiyo ndani mwako? Do you see that in you? Je, waona hiyo ndani mwako? Can I move on a little bit? Je, naweza songa mbele kidogo? And then I don't want to deal with the wise the, the, the righteous rather. I want to handle the wise first. Sitaki kuenda kwa wenye wenye haki. Nataka nishughulikie wenye hekima kwanza. Because the righteous are also so powerful. Kwa sababu wenye haki pia ni ya nguvu kabisa. Because I will talk to you. Kwa sababu nitawazungumzia how the Lord uses the constellation of the stars. Jinsi ambavyo Bwana anatumia ule uangavu wa nyota. And the way the stars are so the way they beautify the heavens. Na jinsi ambavyo nyota wanarembesha mbingu. And so he says there is a church that is supposed to beautify heaven. But let us go step by step first up with the wise and then we come to the righteous then I will go to the throne, right? Thank so you see the way he uses the glory, the glow because Christ Jesus is the light of this world and so that means when he says you are the light of this world then he is saying that the perfect bride that walks after me is a church that taps on my light and then communicates it to the dark world can I handle, finish with the wise the book of Daniel chapter 12 verse 10 Hebu ni malizie na wenye hekima katika kitabu cha Daniel 12 msari wa 10. Haleluya. Haleluya. Rachel, are you working with me? Rachel, what Very well. I see you enjoying the scripture. Ninaona ukifurahia maandiko. So you can go preach it my daughter. Kwa hivyo unaweza kwenda ukaihubiri binti wangu. Okay now, Daniel chapter 12. Daniel 12 verse 10. Mustari wake wa 10. I will add a little bit to expand a little bit more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, Daniel chapter 12, where we were, but I'm now going to verse 10. Daniel I, I promised it. Now we can go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 10 he says. Many will be purified and made spotless and refined, but the wicked will continue to be wicked. Wengi watatakaswa na kuokolewa mawa na, na kuondolewa mawa na kuwa safi, lakini waovu wataendelea kuwa waovu. None of the wicked will understand, but those who are wise will understand. Hakuna moja wa waovu atakaye fahamu, lakini wale wenye hekima watafahamu. Again now, he talks about the wise. Tena sasa, anazungumuzia wenye hekima. And now what he's doing, na sasa kile ambacho anatenda, he's saying, anasema, the dichotomy, there will be two. Ya kwamba kutakuwa na wawili. The wicked and the wise. Waovu na wale wenye hekima. He's saying, anasema, that the wise will have a certain understanding. Ya kwamba wenye hekima watakuwa na ufahamu kiasi fulani. 
Understanding of the times. Ufahamu wa nyakati. Understanding of the requirements. Ufahamu wa matakwa. Understanding of the mysteries of God at this hour. Ufahamu wa siri za Mungu katika saa hii. And he says. Naye anasema. It's so powerful when he uses this. Ni nguvu sana anapotumia hii. Because he says wives will shine like the brightness of the skies. Kwa sababu of the heavens. Wenye hekima watangaa kama mwanga wa mbingu. Meaning affecting the dark world kumaanisha itaathiri dunia yenye giza now sasa he says at this place anasema mahali hapa that the wise kwamba wenye hekima will have understanding watakuwa na ufahamu and then i began to understand alipo kisha nikaanza kuelewa that this is the gift kwamba hii ndio zawadi karamu kipawa kipawa hiki ndicho kipawa this is the gift hiki ndicho kipawa that when the wise Church I am trying to identify for you here. Ya kwamba wakati kanisa la wenye hekima ambalo unajaribu kuwaelezea hapa. We'll begin to operate in the gift of understanding. Litaanza kufanya kazi katika kipawa cha ufahamu. She will help this dark generation. Atasaidia ulimwengu huu mwenye giza to know kujua how to navigate themselves. Jinsi ya kujiendeleza wenyewe. How to live in this difficult hour. Jinsi ya kuishi katika saa hii lenye ugumu. In the fear katika hofu ya Mungu. Ah, ah. I thought that was the point at which she will beam the heavens, the bright heavens to the dark earth. Nafikiria huo ndio wakati ambapo alipaswa kuangaza mwanga unaongaa wa mbingu kwa ulimwengu wenye giza. In other words he saying kwa maneno mengine yeye anasema that the wise church kwamba kanisa la wenye hekima will have insight litakuwa na kule kujua kwa undani. Deep very powerful kwa undani. We will have deeper insight into the things of God at this hour. Kule kujua kwa undani wa bilindini katika saa hii ya mambo ya Mungu. And because of that, na kwa sababu ya hiyo, when she begins to operate in that gift of understanding, anapoanza kufanya kazi katika kipawa hicho cha ufahamu, then she will affect basi ataathiri the dark church. Kanisa lenye giza. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Which means inayomaanisha if you were to define her ikiwa ulikuwa umweleze then you are to say basi unapaswa kusema that the wise bride of Christ the wise church kwamba kanisa ambalo ni lenye hekima bia rusi is wise unto the words of Jesus yeye ana hekima kwa maneno ya Yesu is wise unto the doctrine of Jesus ana hekima kuhusiana mafundisho ya Yesu meaning she is aware kumaanisha anajua that the gospel of Jesus is about the doctrine of the cross doctrine of the blood doctrine of repentance doctrine of holiness righteousness she knows it she is aware that is the insight she needs and in so doing she will affect the others the way the brightness of the heavens affected that dark earth in that vision I saw evangelized her she will be wise unto salvation. Atakuwa mwenye hekima kwa wokovu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't that awesome? Je, hiyo si ni ajabu. And he say, naye anasema, she will be purified. Atatakaswa. While the wicked fools will continue doing that, he say for her she will be in pursuit of purification so the question then becomes wakati wale wajinga wakiendelea kufanya hivyo na uovu basi yeye ataendelea kutakaswa the question then becomes basi swali linakuwa church of christ kanisa la kristo have you perpetually pursued purification je kwa kuendelea umefuatilia utakaso hallelujah hallelujah can I go to the book because of time I want to get to the throne eventually The book Kitabu because today I said I'm going to elucidate to open bit by bit the features and we found that their names must be found in the book Kwa sababu leo nilisema ninaenda kuangazia kupanua kidogo vipenge nani tukapata kwamba majina yao lazima yapatikane yameandikwa kwenye kitabu The book of Revelation 
chapter 3 verse 5 Kitabu cha ufunuo wa Yohana sura ya 3 mstari wa 5 Hallelujah 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 Thank you Asante Then he says this Revelation 3 verse 5 Ufunuo wa Yohana sura ya 3 mstari wa 5 He says Asema The one who overcomes Yeye ashindaye in this version, he says, the one who is victorious. But I want, I love it when he says, the one who overcomes, an overcomer. The Lord said, I have overcome the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm talking about the book. Those whose names are in the book. He says the one who is the one who is victorious will like them be dressed in white. White. And then he said I will never blot out the name of that person from the book of life. But will acknowledge that name before my father and his angels. The perfect bride of Christ that is the wise church must be an overcomer. There is no other way. There's only one way that just as he overcame sin, overcame the moral decay of this world, so must be the church that taps that light from him and communicates to the dark world. So, the question then becomes to the present day church and I see the whole church is here. Have you overcome? umeshinda because when I look at the countenance of the church, the, the her appearance now, I can see that sin has overcome her. And that's why, as I jump to Hebrews chapter 6, verses 4 to 6, that's why the Lord won't like this. This thing about receiving Jesus in the light of Christ, his salvation, and then to turn around and say, Ah, it looks like me, I'm defeated. I, I, I have not married. Let us see what he says here. Hebrews chapter 6, 4 to 6. He says, It is impossible for those who have once been enlightened, those who have tasted the heavenly gift, those who have shared in the Holy Spirit, who have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the powers of the coming age and the uh, and and fall again and all oh, this version changes it this way and have fallen away to be brought back to repentance to their loss they are crucifying the son of God all over again and subjecting him to public shame public disgrace let me explain so that is easier for you to translate he's saying it is impossible if I were you reading that the word I would underline is called impossible. Meaning, it is not possible. For those who have received Jesus become born again, receive the Holy Spirit. They were in that crusade yesterday. They saw the blind, the deaf, the cripples. They saw things. They saw the wonders. The 
power of the coming age they saw yesterday. Waliona vipopo viwete, waliona ngupu, ngupu za kizazi kijazi, kijazi, kijazi. You saw it yesterday there. Waliona jana. The powers of the coming age. Zile ngupu za kizazi ambacho kinakuja. When the doctors say. Wakati madaktari wanasema. That she has no eardrum. So there is no way she can hear. And the Lord overruled and placed a new one. When they said she has no optic nerve, there is no connection between the, that structure and the brain. She cannot see, it's not possible. And then the Lord came overruled it and put a new nerve he's saying if there is a demonstration of the powers of the coming age it is that one so I'm not talking about some imaginary church. I'm talking to you people that were in that meeting. The ones that even saw the beaming live beam heaven in a broad daylight decide to beam the cloud to beam the glory on his servant openly blatantly is the word blatant without fear now wale ambao mliona mliona mnara wa utukufu wa Mungu ukiangaza kwa mtumishi wake mchana peupe sio siri tena and in fact if you watch that beaming na hata hivyo ukitazama huo mnara you'll find that when the man of god moved like this with that crippled baby utagundua kwamba wakati nabii wa Mungu aliposonga hivi na yule mtoto kiwete must have been the time the time he moved to the worship team to the keyboard there the glory also moved like this lazima ile iwe ni ule wakati aliposonga kwenda kwa kikundi cha kuabudu kwa wacheza kinanda huo utukufu pia ulisonga naye namna hii you are the witnesses of the powers of the coming age the powers that overrule the laws of nature and you are born again how then do you turn around and say uh -uh. Uh -uh. you know me I stop I, I, I took a break from ministry. Ah, <laughs> I, I, I rested. Why didn't you come to church? I just took a short break. I, I, rest. I wanted to rest a bit. <laughs> the Lord is saying that continue to rebuke sin whether they all move out of the church don't stop don't stop continue to rebuke harder, harder as they are leaving you are even rebuking more and he's saying in so doing you will stand with the Lord and the Lord of the harvest look in Kenya look at the many millions yesterday nine, nine, yes, nine, we don't know the numbers but we know that it's 92 acres <laughs> are you hearing what I'm how can they come to you when you are busy rebuking sin with such blazing fire wanawezaje kuja kwako wakati ambapo unakemea dhambi na moto uwakao kiasi hichi that means hiyo yamaanisha there must be the lord of harvest somewhere lazima kuwe kuna mungu wa mavuno mahali hallelujah hallelujah you cannot give up on ministry hawezi ukakata tamaa katika huduma and you say i don't know how to handle this church na useme sijui namna ya kushughulikia kanisa hili they are rebellious wao ni waasi they meet in one home wanakutana katika boma fulani moja and discuss me na wananijadili and the things they say are bad because they they they, they make sure it reaches my ears na mambo ambayo wanasema ni mabaya maana wanahakikisha Every time you build is split into half again. You build again after one year, it will half again. Another elder come up and 
more half of it away He says The perfect bride of Christ The wise church Is an overcomer Yes And her name is in that book He said on matters of sin Anasema kuhusiana masuala ya dhambi. That one is easy. Hiyo ni rahisi. Jesus finished it for me. Yesu alimaliza kwa sababu yangu. For me mine is just to preach righteousness. Kwangu mimi ni kuhubiri tu haki. If anyone goes away that's their fault. Kama mtu akiondoka basi hiyo ni makosa yao. But to meet in a house. Lakini kukutana katika nyumba. To start to blaspheme you. Kuanza kukupaka tope. To abuse you and defame you. Kukutukana na kukupaka matope. And then your heart is broken. Alafu mwaya wako unavunjika. And your wife wants to kill you on Sunday in the church. Na mke wako anataka kukuhua jumapili kanisani. She's asking. Ana uliza. Why are you destroying a beautiful church? Ni kwa nini unaharibu kanisa la kupendeza? And then you should answer her back. Alafu lazima umujibu. Say honey, kusema mpenzi, please stay out of this. Tafadhali kaa kando ya hii. Allow me to sort it out with the Lord. Uniruhusu nikaiwa nikaiwe nikapane na Mungu. Allow me to sort this out. Uniruhusu nikaimalize hii. She said but so and so's family is not here. So and so is also not here. They have joined the other church. So and so Yeah. Whether I stand and I preach one person, I will continue rebuking sin. Yes. That is what the Lord is saying. He's saying an overcomer. You must be lazima uwe but to give up ministry lakini kukata tamaa katika huduma and start writing novels na kuanza kuandika majarida and doing other things na kufanya mambo mengine and doing talk show in different tv networks na ukifanya maonyesho fulani katika runinga tofauti tofauti selling your novel ukiuza majarida yako which is not even christian anymore ambayo hata si ya kikristo tena and you are telling people you want to go to hollywood and make movies na unasema unaambia watu nataka kwenda katika hollywood those are your prophets That's what they do. The church of Christ is an overcomer. That's what he's saying here. So you rather make sure you understand that right. As a feature, as an identity. So that you may enter the kingdom of God. It's better you enter the kingdom of God. With that single family they are even poor they cannot support your church. Than to enter hell. With 10,000 members. Who are going to hell with you? It's a hellish church. Hellish. They are hell bound. They are giving you a heck of a time. They, they, they don't want righteousness. They meet you say pastor. You know people are talking. They are saying they are soon going to leave the church. You say please don't bring it to me. Because I want to continue on this road. And see how far I can go with the Lord. <laughs> you are not even worried. That they are going to go. Say no. <laughs> Can I move on? Listen to this now. Before the global economic crisis came. The Lord again. Spoke with me about the coming of the Messiah. And in that conversation He again gave me the identity of the perfect bride Hallelujah 
Hallelujah. That's what I want to share here. Hicho ndicho ambacho nataka kushiriki hapa. Look at this vision now. Angalia haya maono sasa. The Lord lifted me up. Bwana alikaninua juu. On that 19th of August 2008. Tarehe 19 mwezi wa Agosti mwaka wa 2008. In fact a particular hour at 3 a.m. in the morning. Hata hivyo katika reserve plan haswa saa 9 za asubuhi. Before the global economic crisis anyone ever dreamt it was coming. Kabla ya shida ya kiutata ya kiuchumi ya ulimwenguni kote kabla hata mtu yote kuwazia kuihusu. So 19th of August. Kwa hivyo tarehe 19 mwezi wa Agosti. Look at this now. Angalia hii sasa. 2008. Mwaka wa 2008. And then alafu he lifted me up at night. Akaninua wakati wa usiku. About 3 a.m. Yapata saa 9 alfajiri. And I found myself standing before the throne of God. Nami nikajipata nimesimama mbele ya enzi ya Mungu. Only later I understood what that meant. Baadaye tu ndio nilikuja kuelewa hiyo ilikuwa ya maanishani. Because most of the time you are in a hurry to de deliver the message. Kwa sababu deliver. But sometimes when you st sit uh, step back and say ah, what does that mean? Kwa sababu mara nyingi uko katika udharura wa kuwasilisha ule ujumbe, lakini baadaye unakuja tu kuwazia, hiyo ilikuwa ya maanishani. Lakini baadaye ukiweza kukanyaga nyuma kidogo alafu uwaze sema eh maana ya hiyo ni nini? So so anyway so he's saying this. Kwaivo anasema hivi. So, so he lifted. I found myself standing right before the throne of God. Nilijipata nikiwa nimesimama mbele ya enzi ya Mungu. And then, alafu, the glory, the mountain-like glory, covered the throne. Utukufu mkubwa kama mlima ukafunika enzi ya ajabu. In fact, hata hivyo, in the description that we posted on the web, katika maelezeo ambayo tuliweka kwenye mtandao, many years ago, miaka mingi iliyopita, you hear me describing, unanisikia nikielezea how that glory pervades, moves around there, moves even around where I'm standing, of the mountain like glory is there. Jinsi ambavyo huwa utukufu unavyosonga unasonga songa hata karibu pa, karibu na mimi utukufu huwa mkubwa kama mlima and he made me know that he that sits on the throne was seated on the throne na akanisababisha nijue kwamba yeye aliyeketi katika enzi alikuwa ameketi katika enzi now i'm releasing the secrets of heaven sasa ninaachilia siri za mbinguni look at this now angalia hii sasa and you also made me know na pia akanisababisha nijue that the lamb kwamba mwana kondoo was also seated on the throne pia alikuwa ameketi katika enzi but look at this lakini angalia haya i describe nikaelezea how even you could hear the sound of the of the of the of the holiness of the glory jinsi ambavyo hata ungesikia ile sauti sauti ya utakatifu wa utukufu can you imagine hearing it je unaweza ukawazia kuisikia because when the glory moved kwa sababu wakati utukufu uliposonga near me karibu nami it was giving a hissing sound ilikuwa inatoa sauti fulani like a very holy and dreadful sound also ile sauti takatifu na yakutisha mno Yeah, as it moved, you know. Ilipo songa. And then, Alafu, that is the point at which. Hapo ndipo pahali. He opened my eyes, Father. Alifungua macho yangu zaidi. Then I saw that from the glory of the throne. Kisha nikaona kwa mba kutoka katika ule utukufu wa enzi. Came one of the four living creatures that are at the center of the, fro of the throne. Akatokea moja wapo ya viumbe waliohai katikati mwa ile enzi ya mungu. And there are some parts of this vision that I am not allowed to describe. I've never told any human being. No. But up to a point, I am allowed, which I always share. Na kuna baadhi ya sehemu ya haya maono ambayo siruhusiwi kushiriki sijawahi kushiriki mahali fulani lakini hadi kwenye kiwango ambacho ninaruhusiwa So when he came kwa hivyo alipokuja he had a face like man alikuwa na uso kama wa mwanadamu And then you hear me describing Alafu utanisikia nikielezea just a little bit kidogo tu that his face was more serious kwamba uso wake ulikuwa wa kumaanisha zaidi because i saw the straight marks the lines kwa sababu the, the, ni, when he came I, i knew that this is extremely serious nilijua kwamba ilikuwa ya kumaanisha nyeti maana kulikuwa na ule mkunjo wa uso on the face uso ni pake he had a face of man alikuwa na uso wa mwanadamu and that was one of again again one of those most fearful moments in my life na huo ulikuwa moja wapo ya wakati wa kuogofia mno maishani mwangu and the lord you know the lord of course sets me up with them 
So the Lord released him to come to me. He was dreadful. And I see the human face on him. That's what he has. And very, very glorious and holy face. Then when he came, now only later I understood what the Lord wanted to do. God the Father wanted me to identify him. Mungu baba alitaka nikaweze kumtambua. So when I go out to give the prophecy I know which number he is. Ili kwamba ninapoenda nje kutoa wa unabii nikajua yeye ni nambari gani. And so na hivyo he comes anakuja after almost a meter from me. Baada ya tu umbali kama mita moja hivi. After he is sure that I have identified his face. Baada ya kuhakikisha kwamba nimetambua uso wake. His human face. Uso wake wa kibinadamu. Then he turned around. Kisha akageuka there is a silence there again. There is one whole motif, a domain there that is silent. Which I'm not allowed to share. I've never shared. But he turns around and he goes back to the glory of the throne. And when he enters there, I see him release the black horse. follow me on this this is now strong stuff good food for the church strong food to grow the church look at this now when now he has gone and released the black horse the father deliberately again sets me up with the black horse because there is something he wanted to show me. So the black horse with his rider comes blazing towards me. And when he gets near me, one meter like this, he stops like this. The black horse of heaven has wings and those wings are glorious white wings how did I know he came and when he stopped this is what he did the people in South Korea are familiar with this because I was giving the prophecy in South Korea in the, if you look at the videos I gave in Boryong, Bushan, in Incheon all those towns you, you see always I'm doing this that he stretches his wings like he stretched the wings like this and the glory left them and some of it swept me swept the, the area the glory from the white glorious wings of the black horse. Wow. Wow. Are we going to identify the perfect bride? This is the way to identify her. He, he does this again everybody he stretches the wings next to me the black horse that comes from the throne of my father and he does this and the glory emitted comes out of the wings like this. <laughs> there are some deep things about God and it's time for the church to know them and then after that he then now shows me the black horse running all over the earth and I remember when I woke up I, of course the Bible every time the Lord speaks only in the Bible could I have known what the message was 
Hallelujah. And then of course we are going to read it now. But when I went to the book of Revelation chapter 6. Then I understood. We are not reading yet. Then I understood why he brought the creature close to me to identify his face that he may go back and release the black horse that I may know his number and his role and when you travel from so far like you have traveled to come to Kenya I rather give you what you cannot find anywhere else otherwise why why yes. Kenya lazima ni achilie ujumbe bila sivyo basi ni kwa nini lazima ni achilie ujumbe ambao hamuwezi kupata popote lazima bwana hakuongea na mwingine tena kuhusu haya haleluya haleluya so focus on me now kwa hivyo mnilenge sasa listen to me nisikize so hivyo he runs all over the earth i wake up at about three o'clock that's how i knew it was three i check the bible to look for it in fact in my innocence i go to the 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 the, the, the glossary or whatever the concord to look for black horse then i find it so i go to read now hata hivyo nalipoamuka ananionyesha akikimbia kote kote katika dunia basi nalipoamuka nikakwenda katika biblia yangu nikakwenda kwenye itifaki kutafuta farasi mweusi alafu ndipo sasa hivyo ndivyo nilivyoipata then i realized kisha nikagundua when i read nilipoosoma then i realized kisha nikagundua that the lord had just released a very important feature of the perfect bride nikagundua kwamba bwana ameachilia kipengee cha pia harusi mkamilifu can we now read je tunaweza soma sasa the book of revelation chapter 5 kitabu cha chapter 6 verses 5 to 6 kitabu cha ufuno wa yohana mlango wake wa 6 mstari wa 5 hadi 6 wow wow what a mighty day Revelation chapter 6 verses 5 to 6. Ufuno wa Yohana mlango wa 6 mstari wa 5 hadi 6. That's why you see on the YouTube in most of those countries I went before the fulfillment you see me doing my hands like this as I'm preaching. I do like this. That he did like this and you see me doing before it was fulfilled. Kabla itimilizwe mwaona nikifanya mikono yangu namna hii kwamba alifanya hivi. Revelation chapter 6 verses 5 to 6. Ufunuo wa Yohana mlango wake wa 6 mstari wa 5 hadi 6. When the lamp opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, "Come." I looked and there before me was a black horse. Its rider was holding a pair of scales in his hand. Then I heard what sounded like a voice from among the four living creatures saying, "One quart of wheat for your day's wages." Three quarts of barley for days wages alipoivunja ile rakiri ya tatu nikamsikia yule kiumbe wa tatu mwenye uhai akisema jo nikatazama na mbele yangu alikuepo farasi mweusi yeye aliyempanda alikuwa na mizani mkononi mwake ndipo nikasikia kile kilichokuwa kama sauti katikati ya wale viumbe wane mwenye uhai ikisema kipimo kimoja changano kwa mshahara wa kibarua wa siku moja vipimo vitatu vya shairi kwa mshahara wa kibarua kwa siku moja and he finished by saying na anamalizia kwa kusema and do not damage the oil and the wine lakini usiharibu mafuta na zaituni wala divai that is where the definition of the perfect bride of christ is hapo ndipo maelezo ya bi harusi mkamilifu wa kristo ipo of course when i woke up i began to announce the coming of the global economic crisis hata hivyo nalipoamuka nikaanza kutangaza kukuja kwa utata wa shida ya kiuchumi ya ulimwenguni kote why kwa nini because the balance kwa sababu ratiri the rider of the black horse black horse yule mpandaji yule farasi mweusi is holding a balance in his hand anabeba ratiri mikononi mwake the balance ile ratiri represents buying and selling inaashiria ununuzi na uuzaji meaning there is a black day coming to the global buying and selling kumaanisha kuna siku nyeusi ambayo inakuja katika uuzaji na ununuzi why kwa nini because i saw him run all over the nation kwa sababu nalimuona akikimbia kote kote katika mataifa in that vision na katika hayo maono 
It took only three weeks. And then, because first of all, when I said, when, when I said in the prophecy, global, global economic crisis. The shock was, how can you give such a humongous global prophecy? How about if it, that's too big, how about if it does not fulfill? Even me, as I kept giving, I said, wow, but that's too big a prophecy. It took only three weeks. And one single sprinkling of an eye like this. And the stock markets crashed from New York all the way through Europe into Asia. Kote, kote, kutoka New York, kote, kote, mbaka Asia. Until it even shocked me also. Hadi ikanishtua pila. And then you heard about the freezing of the credit lines and what, and everything that became a big issue. Alafu mnasikia kule kukomeshwa kwa credit lines na mambo kama hayo yote, ikakuwa utatanifu kote. Okay, now, Sasa, that the prophecy was said, kwamba unabi ulisemwa, and then fulfilled. Alafu ukatimilizwa, what is the message the church? How do we use that to identify the perfect bride? Ujumbe ni upi kwa kanisa. Tuna utumiaje kutambua pia rusi mkamilifu wa kristo. How is that helping us to see an insight? To be able to see and say, oh, that's the perfect bride. This is not. Tuna wezaje kutumia hiyo na kujua, ah, huyo ni bibi ya rusi wa kristo na huyo siye. Okay, focus on me now. Basi mnilenge sasa. Inside that prophecy is the secret of God. Ndani mwa wa unabii kuna hiyo siri ya Mungu. Look at this. Angalia haya. There is the physical aspect of that prophecy. Kuna kile kiashiria cha kiasilia cha huo unabii. And the spiritual consequence of that prophecy. Na athari za kiroho za huo unabii. That's why I kept saying the double tire. Ndiyo double tire prophecy. Ndio sababu nasema ni unabii wa kuwili. Look at this now. Angalia haya sasa. When you look at life in Israel, I'm talking about Israel ancient. Even now, by the way, it's not any different, only that the scales have been scaled up different now. The levels are different, but they're the same structure. Look at this now. Israel, Israel the wealthy people used to live on the hills because they threw the garbage down the poorer people used to live at the valleys and that's why when he told Jeremiah that go to the porter's house only when you get there shall I give you the message for the house of the Lord that's why Jeremiah went to the valley of Ben-Hinnon because that's where now the, the poorer people, the porters used to work that's the valleys there and now he is saying according to Jeremiah he was saying that the porter was using broke, the other pot, broken pot to, to, to mix with mud and do what and build another pot another Nandiposa alikuwa anasema kwamba huyo mfinyanzi alikuwa anatumia vile viungu vizee anavyungamanisha na kutengeza viungu vingine but we know lakini tuwajua that at that valley there was so much garbage ya kwamba katika lile bonde kulikuwa na takataka nyingi so there was stench kwa hivyo kulikuwa na uvundo but that's where the poor people lived na kwamba hapo ndipo watu maskini walipokuwa wakishi but for jeremiah lakini kwake yeremia the lord was simply saying that the worship coming out of that house like this anyhow the richer people used to live up the poorer down when you look at the dining table of the poorer people Unapoangalia ile meza ya chakula ya watu maskini This what you saw Hiki ndicho ulichoona the, the pita bread until today in Israel the pita bread is subsidized by government 
hadi wa leo mkate aina wa bita kule Israeli unalipiwa na serikali umepunguzwa bei na serikali that everybody may afford the common denominator everybody may afford ya kwamba kila mtu wa kawaida anaweza akajimudu everybody look at me now kila mtu nitazame sasa how, how many minutes 10 I'll finish I'll finish Look at this now Angalia haya sasa that everybody may afford Kwamba kila mtu apate kujimudu So you found bread was there Kwa hivyo unapata kwamba mkate ulikuwepo pale Whatever else you found you ate with it Chochote kingine ulichopata ulikula pamoja na But if you look at the picture of the richer people Lakini ukiangalia taswira ya watu matajiri On the mountain katika mlima That bread was there Huo mkate ulikuwemo But there also olive oil and wine lakini kulikuwa na mafuta ya zaituni na divei. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Olive oil and wine. Kulikuwa na mafuta ya zaituni na divei. And he's sending the rider of the black horse. Naye anamtuma mpandaji wa farasi mweusi. And he's saying. Naye anasema. If you find those ikiwa utapata hao who are barely making it. Ambao wanafaulu tu. Barely surviving. Wananusurika tu wanaishi. Make it harder for them. E ukafanya ikakuwa ngumu kwao. A quart of wheat for a day's wages is just enough wheat for one person for one day kibaba changano kwa mtu kwa mshahara wa mtu ni kibaba kinachotosha tu mtu mmoja listen sikiza but if you find those whose dining table looks like oil and wine please do not damage it preserve them lakini ukipata wale ambao meza zao zafanana kama divei na mafuta tafadhali ukawahifadhi usiwaangamize We have just hold on for the guests please i know some of you have listened to some of this someone listen the oil mafuta the oil represents the flow of the anointing of the holy spirit mafuta inaashiria mtiririko wa upako wake roho mtakatifu So in other words the Lord was saying I'm releasing the rider of the black horse but when you go down there you'll find two types of congregations Kwa maneno mengine Bwana alikuwa anasema namwachilia farasi mweusi lakini utakapokwenda kule chini utapata aina ya kusanyiko mara mbili You'll find a church where the gospel has been commercialized and the truth of God has been replaced with the pagan beliefs of liberalism homosexuality gospel of prosperity and name it and there is hunger there utapata kanisa pale chini ambapo injili ya Mungu imefisadishwa na mashoga na usasa na mambo ya uhuru na mambo kama hayo liberal theology ma liberal theologia they are teaching another gospel wanafundisha injili nyingine the truth of god ukweli, has been replaced ukweli wa mungu umebadilishwa and there is hunger in that church na kuna njaa katika ilo kanisa anything you teach they eat it chochote unachofundisha wanakula there is scarcity kuna kukosefu if you find that church ukipata ilo kanisa destroy that church ukaliangamiza ilo kanisa that is not the bride huyo sio biarusi And he's saying Kisha anasema, because you might be thinking wow what a cruel god right Kwa sababu unaweza fikiria ah ni Mungu mkatili Listen. gani Usikiza. And he's saying however anasema hata hivyo you will encounter another church utakutana na kanisa lingine that is in the revival of the holy ghost Ambalo liko katika uvumvia wa Roho Mtakatifu The oil and wine church The kanisa la divai na mafuta The oil and wine church Kanisa la mafuta na divai Do you remember the wine Je unakumbuka divai When Jesus took the cup Wakati Yesu alichukua kikombe And say this is my blood Akasema hii ndio damu yangu The church that is in the blood of Jesus Kanisa ambalo liko katika damu ya Yesu The church where the holy spirit is flowing Like yesterday Like yesterday here The cripples are walking The blind are seeing There is a revival The truth is preached Holiness The women are not naked He says 
When you meet the church, preserve her. That is the bride. And Jesus said in Matthew chapter 25 that the wise virgins they bear the jar of oil. So the Lord is saying that the churches in your countries need to wake up now and ask yourself are we the church where the gospel has been commercialized where there is the doctrinal era and decay and then anything goes or are we the church that embraces repentance and holiness and the flow of the anointing comes as they are preaching the blood of Jesus hallelujah, hallelujah. the Lord is saying that there are two churches today Leo. one of them Moja wapo. has sold Ime uza. in Spanish they say vende vende Katika Spaniola, wanasema vende vende sangre vende sangre they are selling the blood of Jesus Wana uza damu ya Yesu. but he said there is another church Na nasema kuna kanisa lingine we are holiness every time the pastor opens his mouth you just hear one word holiness no, no women come with skirts never you will never see their legs never look, look at the ones in Kenya you will not see their even an inch even an inch no there must be holiness it is not a lofty aspiration it is realizable in this life as we prepare to sign off to go off air I want to say this listen to me the Lord has identified the bride and he saying the bride is covered by the blood of Jesus because the pastors are preaching the blood the blood the blood the blood the blood the blood all the time and he's saying that church has the Holy Ghost revival you see many many deaf ears have opened many cripples have gotten up and are walking they are not selling fake miracles like in Nigeria in America and wherever Never. they are realizing the promised latter glory they are not teaching some wisdom tricks of financial positioning in the financial marketplace no they are teaching the blood of Jesus and the coming of the Messiah everybody bring your flags here to me now Surely the Messiah is coming. Next year we'll see you. If we have a conference in August, we'll invite you. I'll speak with Hallelujah! Glory! What a mighty three days! What a mighty three days! Thank you, MTV! Thank you, MTV!
put the life in joy. Revival. No more revival. Today, I am born again. 